happy to be on the scene. He was like, so I'm like, hi. 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 Welcome to our visitors. Yes. yes. Welcome to everybody who joined us Who was? Roberto's guitar. Oh, yeah. Harmonic vibration. Good morning. With prayer requests, and praise and worship, and we like to share. Um, we invite anybody who's here today to share what's on their heart, a prayer request, or a testimony from God. Anybody want to no, share? You're doing it all. All right. Well, then let's just pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus, and we invite you to this. House, this house of prayer this morning. So we gather together to worship, to praise, to hear the speaking of your word, to be transformed in the renewing of our minds by the hearing of your word. Right now we speak to the north and the south and the east and the west. Yes, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit roam forth and draw yes, in those that are not here today. We pray for the members of this body who are ill, who can't be here today. We pray for our pastor and his wife who are, are gone just at least a few weeks. And right now we ask you to bless this service, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless the worship as we yes. offer up a, a sacrifice of praise this morning. Yes. And bless uh, the service and the word that comes forth today. And be with us, yes, be with us this morning. Yes, Reveal yourself. And give yes. us all eyes to see and ears to hear and follow after you this morning. Yes. And above all, that your name yes. and that your kingdom yes. will be glorified. Yes. Uh, just a reminder, if you're part of cell phone, go ahead and silence it or turn And there is the birthday boy in the house. I do believe that John's beautiful bride has uh, arranged for a surprise after the service. There will be fire and ice cream. The fire and ice. Uh, happy birthday, John. We will all be celebrating you. Uh, and financial peace, uh, I don't know, uh, we're in week three, just getting to start week three for anybody that's participating. Um, hopefully this will be the first of many opportunities for anyone that would like to learn um, how to have more peace in the area of finance in your lives. Is that right? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, uh, I think this has been a great experience so far. I'm already starting to see some chains being broken uh, to free people from uh, the word, from bondage of, of debt. Uh, so I think this is going to be a great ministry for this church, not only for people to learn about this, but also to spread the word of God through to others that uh, are not part of our church community. Uh, on week four, there's going to be a, a guest coming to the class, so it's very exciting. And then there's going to also going to be another one coming to week seven. So good things are going to happen, that's the ones are going to be shared. So um, I'm seeing great things from others. Amen. All right. Um, so let's do an offering for Don and Ron. You guys want to come take that for this morning? Don, you want to ask the blessing this morning, please? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here this morning. We're so thankful to honor Brother John. He's a yes. wonderful person. We love him. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you bless this offering, bless the remainder of the service, and may we have a great time in you. Yes. We ask it in the name of God every day. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And before we worship, I guess, not to put you on the spot, John, but is there anything you'd like to share, any words of wisdom as you celebrate your 70th year? I know that your wife was sharing last Sunday a tremendous work that your life has been, and she found some notes from your teaching and wondered why you don't teach anymore. And, uh, just if you want to share anything that's on your heart this morning. Well, uh, I just thank God that I'm here, uh, not just on the earth, but in this building. And, uh, yes. Fellowship, uh, and uh, that's why I haven't felt the need to for so much good teaching already. And everybody that's uh, in the Word, it's just a great uh, 
atmosphere, a great place like God is able to do so much if we let him and just thank, thank the Lord that uh, we have the unity where we want to uh, see God moving and uh, use us to do what he wants to do. And we have been seeing the uh, first part, you know, of what God is not the store, so I just want to uh, encourage us all that God has, he's got it all together, of course, you know, and uh, we just need to be in him and see a great thing happen, and uh, time flies, you know, <laughs> before you know it, uh, this will all be over, so we might as well make the most of it while we can, and uh, give God the glory, and I'm just excited that uh, the more we get along this road of life and the older we get, the more uh, uplifting we should be, you know, the more positive and the prospects of uh, a great life are never diminished by God but they increase all the time. So I just thank God that He gives us that joy and what we have is just the start, you know. We never reach the end and people who reach, think that they've reached the end and start going down and just shut down their uh, potential and their outlook that they just don't get it that God is uh, unlimited and I just thank God that uh, we've got that going here, praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, worship team. Awesome job. They deserve a hand, too. appreciate every opportunity to come up here and share what God is doing. And you know, and, and when uh, uh, these get prepared, you know, I always seek God and say, what would you want me to speak about? And one of the, the biggest things, and, it, and it's clear, I mean, it's like being on billboard time. And you know, one of the biggest things is just being able to listen to God. You know, I tell you what, I keep you out a whole lot of trouble. If you ask God first, then listen to His answer. Yeah. You know, prayer, prayer is it, it, it's, it's a dialogue. You know, it, we're, we need to listen to God. Okay? God listens to us, but we need to listen to God too. Listen to His answers back. Sometimes it's kind of lopsided. You know, we got God, we need this, we need this, we need this. You know, and, and, and it's, it's nothing wrong with asking. As I said once before, it's nothing wrong with ask. But sometimes we got to listen to what God wants to say. Isn't it interesting on, on the Mount of Transfiguration when, when Jesus gets glorified and Peter, James, and John see that and his voice comes from heaven? Isn't it interesting? Let, let's turn to that. I actually want to go to that start with that. Let's go to uh, Luke 9. Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. Now I got the Amplified Version so it'll, it'll read a little different than uh, what gets put on the screen sometimes. But uh, I just think this is always fascinating. Luke 9, and start uh, 28 to 35. This is, the reason this is so important, this tells you what God the Father wants us to do in a relationship with Jesus. Sarah. And this is Luke 9, chapter 28, or Luke 9, verse 28. There's a uh, says, now about eight days, I'm reading, I'm reading now the Amplified Version. Now about eight days after these teachings, Jesus took with him Peter and Jesus. Peter and John and James went up on the mountain and prayed. As he was praying, the appearance of his countenance became altered, different, and his rain became dazzling white, flashing with rays of light. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in splendor and majesty and brightness, and were speaking of his exit from life, which he was about to bring to realization at Jerusalem. And Peter and those with him were weighed down with sleep. When they fully woke, they saw his glory and splendor, and majesty, and brightness, and the two men who stood with him. And it occurred as the men were parting from them that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's delightful and good that we are here. Let's instruct the booth, three booths or huts, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not noticing and knowing what he was saying. But even as he was saying this, a cloud came and began to overshadow them. They were seized, alarmed, and struck with fear as they entered to the cloud. Now, this. this Verse 35 is really the key. Because we know there's a voice came out of the cloud. We know that's going to be the Father God. Then there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one, or my beloved. Listen to and yield to and obey him. Isn't that interesting what God is saying about Jesus' son, that we ought to listen to what he has to say. And and in it, I, I just I just love that. I got to think about what it, what does that listen mean? It means to give attention with the ear. Yeah. Right? Give attention. Because Jesus says, He said, ears let him hear. Now we realize that most people are gonna have two ears, so we're not talking about physical ears, right? He's talking about listening with the heart. Amen. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Take it to heart what he has to say. Amen. And I tell you, once we get that deep down inside. And, and 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 the missus, she is so good. She taught me that. And I praise the Lord that the years we've been together. But that's one lesson she taught me. If God says do it, just do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Don't argue. Just do it. Yeah. You know, he knows best. You know, you know, think about it. Think about it. Somebody that created you that understands your makeup yeah. and knows what's best for you is telling you to do something. Just do it. Yeah. How can you be wrong? Now, the biggest thing that people say, well, Tim, I don't know. I get kind of confused. I don't know if, if God's telling me that or Satan's telling me that. But I said, okay, I, I understand. Okay? <laughs> but you know what? One, Satan don't care about people. Okay? 
Because he really doesn't take, I want you to go pray for that sister over there. Or pray for that brother over there. Or go, you know, hey, hey Brother Joe needs to hear, hear a call from you. And when you talk, talk to him, see what he needs there and pray for him right there. Who say you don't want to do that? Yeah, I don't care about Brother Jones. Or let, him, let him live his life. No, God's going to tell you something because he's looking at the, the kingdom as a whole. He's looking. He loves every single person. That's what we got to get. Sometimes, you, oh, I don't know, Tim. That they're a dirty dog sinner. You know, they just put sinners in categories. Well, who, who did Jesus die for? He died for all of us. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. Not that we were righteous, not to be good. While we were yet sinners. And that's one thing we can never forget. Okay? We look at that person on the street and, you know, sometimes we say it's too bad. But we don't know where it's like. The best thing we can do is pray for that person. You know, sometimes if we can help them out, you know, we can help them out. But I tell you, the, the best thing for us to do is to realize that God loves him. Okay? God loves him just as much. Yes. You know, the thing is, one time I, I uh, saw a young man, and I know sometimes I share the same thing, but I tell you, when they're on their heart, they got to come out. You know, it's, it's like I saw, uh, we was driving down in the trucks, and as you know, I, I teach trucking, and, and we was driving down uh, 14, and I'll never forget this young man who must have been drunk or on drugs, I don't know, but he was stumbling. He kept going back and forth like he was going to step out on the road row there on 14 down there south and I mean one step I mean he was stumbling from sidewalk I mean just one step I mean then trucks was coming down through there and, and I remember and I know I, I gotta you know sometimes I gotta subdue myself but sometimes I can't I just can't I'm a tight person and I remember just screaming no 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 that's not the plan for that young man's life that's not where he wants to be God wants him to be at that's not it for him to be stumbling drunk and, and one step and he's out in eternity. That's, God's got something better for his life. Right. You know, and I don't know what happened to the young man, but I remember I'm going to keep praying for him, you know, and see him in glory one day. That's the plan. But just to see him stumbling there drunk and it's 10 o'clock in the morning and just one step and he's gone. And, and you know, that's what we got to do. We have that burden. That's why Jesus came. You know, we think about that. That's why the Father said, listen to him. Listen to what he's saying. You know, Jesus, one thing I know that, that if you look in the scriptures, there's one thing. Jesus had this, this cry. He loved people. Yeah. And people were drawn to him. So many people were drawn to him. The ones that he had the biggest issue with was the religious people. Yeah. That thought, hey, I'm all right. I'm not like that person. Right. You know, the, the worst prayer, I think the worst prayer in the whole Bible is the, the, the publican and the, and the Pharisee praying. You know, that, that has absolutely got to be the worst prayer. You know, you know, I do this, I do that. You know, I'm not like this guy over here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know this guy over here. Now, but but the, the publican, he understood one thing. He didn't raise his eyes up. You know, just, just Lord, you know, just forgive me. I, I know. And that, that's really where our heart ought to be, you know. We, we have no righteousness in us. The righteousness found in Jesus Christ. Right. When I don't look it up, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Because he, he understood right. where does it come from. It comes from God's righteousness, right. God's holiness, yes. God's truth. Yes. That's what we have to always realize. Yes. It's about him. Yes. And that's what we got to point our eyes to. Yes. You know, I look to the hills for whence yes. cometh my help. They, it's not the hills themselves. It's one who created the hills. Yeah. That's what we always got to look to. That You know, some, some of the old saints really understand that. They understand when there's no bread in the house and, and this is not going right, that's going right, they get on those knees and they pray and they believe God. That's what they. That's what we all ought to do every time. You know, we worry. I, I was thinking about, you know, how, why do we worry about stuff? You know, it doesn't help. Have you ever worried about something and it got better? It, it went the other way. It got worse. Because now you're getting nervous. Your stomach starts to, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you what. You either believe God or you don't. That, that's really what it comes. You know, whose side are we on? You know, we're on the winning side. I mean, the Bible tells us plainly who's going to win at the end. And we already won. Right. But it's still a battle. It's still a battle. But, man, when Jesus is fighting for you, you're on the winning side. I mean, you know, one thing in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, and I love the first, for the eye of the Lord moved to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose hearts completely his. That's the New American Standard. Then in King James, 
For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. So no matter where you're at, He knows where you're at. He can find you to show Himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward Him. God wants to do miracles in your life. God wants to use you. All we have to do, I love that when we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love that. We used to say that. We used to say the song, Church I grew up, soul say yes. We would say that a lot. Soul say yes. Soul say yes. And that surrender to God makes all the difference. A, a, another New English translation. I, I love these different translations. It says certainly. I love that. I mean that we know what the word certainly is. That's the way it is. Yeah. Certainly the Lord watches the whole earth carefully and is ready to strengthen those who are devoted to Him. Hallelujah. <clears throat> That's really where it comes to. Is that, you know, when you get decided, it, it, it really comes down. You know, Paul says, I know who I am believe. Right. You know, I know who I believe. You know, he know, And his desire, Paul understood one thing. My desire, what I need to do, I need to know him. That's what I need to do. I need to get that relationship with him. I need to always have, always have nothing that blocks that relationship right. with God. No sin, no attitude. I, I know we, we got different attitudes and stuff that go, we can go to God. You know, anything that's not of you needs to go, God. That any attitude that's not of you needs to go. Because I don't want nothing to cause that static on the line. I don't want nothing. You know, you used to sing that song, Jesus on the main line. We sing it sometimes. But, you know, that, that is something. You know, call them up. We should call them up. Tell them what you want. Call them up. We don't want anything to interfere with that. We know because I'm telling you, sometimes you need that prayer answered right now. I mean, it, 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 and I'm going to help a week. I need that prayer answered right now. You know, all, all the years I've been driving, I know when there's a snowstorm, and then I know when there's a snowstorm. I know the difference where it's really bad, where you're driving 10 miles an hour. And, 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 and y'all that have been out southeast Island, where uh, before they had the, the new road down there, from, from Mount Pleasant to Fairfield, 21 miles. It took me over two and a half hours to go 21 miles. Now, how fast are you going there, buddy? You know? <laughs> I mean, basically, I'm idling across. It was that bad. You know, so I just hold that truck and you trust in God. But you know what? When we tend to listen to God, you know, if, if the hardest time to listen to God is in those difficult times, isn't it? And it, it, when, it, when it, everything's going good, oh yeah, no, no problem. When the covers are full, you got a full tank of gas. Oh man, that's good. But oh man, turn around. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, and I know I share this a lot. But one thing about it is that the same God. That bless you when times are full, when you got full, is the same God that when things aren't full. Right. He's the same God. He don't change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And that's what we always got to remember. Always got to remember, and, and, and it's a New Living Translation, 1 Peter 3 12. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. Mm. Yeah. Remember that God hears you. See, the best thing I really think you can do for your kids is to teach them to pray. Not, not, and it's not to teach them to pray with food and just little prayers, but I mean, teach them to really get a hold of God. See, kids understand one thing. They just have that simple belief. You know, they don't have all this other stuff mixed in there. Well, you know, you, you really can't teach them to believe that. I said, look, I can teach them one thing. I can teach them to believe this word, the word of God. That's what I can teach them. If I got to get them a, a youth Bible or whatever, I'm going to teach them. Because I tell you what, they remember that, that song we used to sing, Jesus Loved Me, This I Know, when they used to sing that in Sunday school. How far does that song go? You could be 50, 60 years old and that song still comes back to you. I tell you what, in those times where, where things don't look like they're going well, I tell you what, it doesn't look like nobody loves you because you can have those times where yeah. friends turn away. Yeah. And it's always more hurtful when it's somebody you love and, yeah. and, you, and you really had everything invested in them and they, they say, well, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. That hurts. That hurts. But you know what? Jesus understands that. See, that, that's what, you know, he, he, he understands where we're coming from. See, he understands those heartbreak. You know, the, I still think the saddest scripture in the Bible is, is where it says the disciples forsook them and fled. You know, when they come and, and you know, here come the soldiers and they, they got them out of the garden. The Bible said disciples forsook them and fled. That, that has got to be hurtful. I'm telling you. You know, because here they walked in three and a half years. They saw the miracles. They saw the dead raised. They knew this was the Messiah. They knew this was the chosen one. You know, 
And, and I'm telling you, and you think about Peter, James, and John that heard the voice from heaven. I mean, I'm telling you, there's, there's so many, there were so many, you know it was the right one. They didn't miss it. And when he needed the most, they took off. Now, when we think about fled, they're just not walking away. They're running away. You know? And the only one at least turned around was Peter. You know, he turned around, but he already, Jesus and him already talked. He knew Peter was going to deny him three times. And he did do that. But you know what? What I love about Jesus, even when we mess up, even when we fail, you know what? He doesn't throw us away. <laughs> so some people do that. Some of you mess with them one time, but uh, you're a goner. You're a goner. Oh, uh, you're no good to me because you messed up. Well, let me tell you something. Now, th this, you know, I, I, I said before, I do study quotes, so I get a lot of quotes from, from, from other areas, but I'm telling you, sometimes they just fit the philosophies right. Oscar Wilde said, the only difference between the saint and the sinner is that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. I love that. I just thought, wow, that is just right on. That's right. We have a past. We came from somewhere. But let me tell you, the only thing the past is good for is remember what you used to be. Right. Just remember. That's the old Tim. I go home sometimes, you know, and you run into some old people. How you doing, Timmy? You know, and then I say, I'm doing good. You know, Jesus Christ is there. You know, I'm doing good. But it's a, I remember when you did this. They always bring it up. You get some old, get, bring it up. I remember you did this. I said, you know what that? You know, I tell them this. I know I said it before. That was B.C. You know what that means? Yeah. That was before Christ. Let's talk about my life afterwards. Yeah. Okay? I have been perfect, but I kept the train on the track. And as long as the train's on the track, it's going to get to its destination. Yeah. You know, that's what it's about. That we, we can't. We got to stay on the track, even if things look don't look very good. You know, like when they talk about the Bible, you know, if you, if you don't have, oh man, I don't know, my job looks like I might get laid off, <clears throat> or this might happen, you know. I said, let, let me explain something. How big is your God? Yes. You think that sometimes we think that God gets surprised with what's going on down here. Yeah. Well, like you don't know, like you don't know what's going on. I tell you what, I often say this. Why is why the person sitting with the shades down? I ain't never figured that. You know, they said to say, well, nobody sees me. Nobody sees me. And Moses thought that. You know, he killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. The Bible said he looks this way, looked that way. The problem is he didn't look up. Uh -huh. That's what his problem was. He should have looked up. You see, he was seen. He can't hide from God. He can't hide from God. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Let me tell you, you can't hide. The best thing to do is come clean. You know, Jesus said, he want the, the Father seeketh such a worship him in spirit and what? In truth. truth. You yeah. might as well come truth with God. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I want you to actually turn to Exodus 3. Exodus chapter 3. We've got to go visit old Moses for a little bit. <laughs> we like old Moses. Yeah. Exodus 3. Again, i got to amplify it first. You know, and, and Moses' name, interest, is drawn out. You know? He can draw him out of the water. Yeah. But God drew him out of himself. You remember the first 40 years, you know, he, he, he had those first few years that he was living, you know, how the story goes, but he, he was living in Egypt. So he had all the luxury and stuff, and then realized, hey, wait a minute, God's calling him. And, and you know, sure, those, those years ahead of his mom, you know his mom must have told him something. You know, you're chosen. You're a chosen. God's going to do something. I tell you what, that's the best thing you can tell your kid. Yeah. That there's a reason for you being here. Yes. God has a plan for your life. I tell you what, I, I deal with individuals all the time, come all different walks of life, and, and I tell you what, I tell them that, that you know what, I believe you, I'm here to support you. Let's lock arms. I don't just say that because I'm, I'm an instructor, I say it because I believe from my heart. Because I'm telling you what, when, when, when people don't have anybody believing in, they get themselves in a whole bunch. Well, nobody cares anyway, so no matter what I do. But when you tell them, you know what, I tell you what, I'm on your side. And we got to look at it. God is on our side. Yes. That's what we got to never forget. You know, whether it's a job situation or a home life situation, God is big enough to help. Let me tell you, when you think about the Creator, Okay? When, when he puts the stars up, he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the stars up, and you stay there until I tell you otherwise. You know? When the sea, he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to make create seas, you stop there until I tell you otherwise. You know, and the planet, that's what's great about science I like looking at. They're discovering universes far out. You know, they go out. 
It's like God's creation process is still going on. And it is because it's going on in us. You know, him still saying that song, you know, he took a week moon to make the sun and stars, but he's still working on me. Hallelujah. That's what's happening. He's still working on us. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. There's things he's still working on. He's still building us to be like him. That's what we want us to be. You know, we he, we're ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors represent the home country. That's what they do. We're, we're not of this world. That's why a lot of times we don't fit in. Because people see that there's a difference. They always see that as a difference. When Moses came down from the mountain and he'd spent time, God, his face was shining so much. They had to put a veil on him. Because it was so when you spend time with God, even the disciples, there was something different. That people ought to know that you're a Christian. Just a lot of times you're supposed to walk in a room. There's something different about them. There's a glow. Uh, yesterday we was over over at Walmart. And uh, uh, there was a lady standing. She had how many kids? Four? Four kids. And they was all on the ground. So you know they was all walking around. And you know what struck me about her? I mean, she had this basket full of these kids. One was probably, boy was probably eight or nine. The girl was six and the other was younger. But you know what struck me? I seen that joy in her. There was a joy in her and a light that just came out of her. She was the happiest woman I've seen. And she had a, there was little kids there, you know, and she and she was just so happy. It's like God had blessed her with these kids, you know, and, and he put me as their mom, and I am so blessed. That just came out of her at the register. There was this smile, there was this light. It's like she was said, thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity to raise these kids. You know, and be their mom. There was, she wasn't yelling at them and like you see something. <laughs> you know, get away from that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. We can't afford that. No, it was a love that was there. There was something like maybe just to like just hug them all. Because they, they, the kids was doing pretty good. I mean, the boy was kind of laid back. And the other ones, it's just like they, they had, there was a peace that surrounded them. We went out to the car, and, was, and we went out about the same time, and there was a peace there. It's like you knew God was with that lady. Yeah. There was something different, and that's the way people ought to view you. Yeah. When, when they see you in a grocery store or driving, now I know what I'm talking about driving, kids, yeah. because that's a different area. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a different area. We can't talk about that. You know, I said, I tell you what, are you a Christian in your car or not? You know, right. I mean, you're still a Christian behind the wheel, but let me tell you, brother, I, I've seen some strange things. Don't put a honk, honk if you love Jesus on there, guys. I tell you, you might see some strange things happening. Let me tell you. But you know what? But what we've got to always realize one thing is how much God loves us. Okay? Now, because you know old Moses, you know, when he, when he were in, went in the wilderness, now you think about it. Those first few years, yeah, I think, man, I don't know, God, what's going on now. I'm out here, you know, I'm out in the wilderness. I'm on the backside of the desert. I'm tending sheep, you know. He's far away from the luxury, you know. And I'm sure, well, they think everybody either forgot my name and you don't see his family or anything. You know, and that first few years was bad. But think about the first decade, 10 years. Oh, man, God, where are you at? That had to be hard for Moses. Because there's no, no business of his family or anything out there. 20 years gone by. Mm -hmm. Hey, God, man, I I don't know, man. I'm just trying to eat sheep. We have conversations out here, but I don't know how deep it is talking to the sheep. You know? yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? But 30 years gone by. You think of Moses one? Has God forgotten me? He had to. Had to. 30 years? Yeah. But oh, something happened that 40th year. That's where we're going to start. This is uh, Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jephthah and his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the back of the west side of the wilderness, came to a court or sign of the mountain of God. Verse 2. Then the angel of the Lord appeared. Now, in the Amplified Version, it actually says if the angel is capitalized. So we got to know who that is. Jesus came out of there. See, so you know what? I ain't forgotten the most. Just, just hang on. I'm coming. I'm coming to you today. This is your day. See, it's always about that. We got to always think God's going to appear every day. Because He is. 
Yeah. You know, people say, well, well, Tim, God doesn't speak to me every day. Well, he speaks to me every day to read the Bible. What do you think it is? Jesus is the Word, and the Word was with God. Yeah. This is Jesus right here. He's speaking to you every day. We just got to listen, right? Yeah. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, which was not, was not, and yet was not consumed. So that would be a strange sight. It's not burning up, but it's fire there. And look at Moses said. It starts with these two words. He says, I will. See? That, that's important. Your will. We're going to surrender. That's the first two words you hear Moses say mm -hmm. in this chapter. He said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why this bush is not burned. And look what look at the response the Lord said. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, when he, so when he made that turn, and that's what happens a lot of our life. We just need to make that turn. Come on. You know, re re repent. You know, turn, turn around. Turn around. Turn around. God is speaking to us every day. A lot of times we just need to turn around and listen to what He has to say. And the Lord said He turned aside to see. Listen, God called to Him out of the midst of the bush and said. Now I love this. The reason this is so important. He says Moses twice. Okay? That, that's important. He says, Moses, Moses. Okay, so there, there probably wasn't another Moses out there, but we're going to make sure that Moses understood who I'm talking to. Okay? You know, because he might, he might, well, did I hear my name? Did, it, what, he's calling me, but I'm telling you, he said it twice. It's like when your mom used your whole name yeah. and called you, you know it was serious business right there. You know, your whole, when she used your middle name, you know, buddy, it, it, was, it was business all right there. Yeah. But he said, and the bush said, Moses, Moses. All right? We're getting ready to change some things. And, and Moses must have been ready. Because he, what a great response. And he said, here am I. Yeah. I'm right here. All right? What do you want to say? And God said, and it's always the case, you not come near, but your shoes off, put your shoes off your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. It's always holy ground when God's there. Because we serve a holy God. It's always holy ground. Hallelujah. And he, and he said, also he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and most hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Oh, we're in a holy environment right now. Amen. We're standing with God. Amen. Hallelujah. There ought to be that reverence there. And the Lord said, and this is what we think. Now all this stuff, and Moses has been out there, and he, he had all these things was going on. And look what the Lord said. He said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters and oppressors. This is what you've got to never forget. For I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials. See, God knows where you're at, no matter what you're going through. He knows whether your cupboards are full or empty. He knows whether you don't have gas. He knows if you have relationships. He says, I know. Don't ever forget that. God is already aware of what's going on. But look what happens. Look what happens in verse 8. Look, and I have come down to deliver them. Okay? Deliverance has come. And out of the land and out of the hand and power of the gypsies. I'm going to deliver you out of that situation. And bring and to bring them up out of the land to a land good, large and land flowing with milk and honey. A land of plenty to the place of the Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite, Pesarite, Hagite, and Jebusite. Now, there's a time. He's going to bring you up and out. I love that. Okay? There's a time. And sometimes you feel like you're at most. God, where are you at? Where are you at? You know what he says? I'm right here. Uh, I haven't moved anywhere. Uh, See, I'm still on the throne. The only, the only picture, and I know I share this before, but the only picture I ever get is like Isaiah did. When he sees God high and lifted up. You know, his it's, it's train filled with temple. That's the only image I get. I, I never get an image of the Holy Spirit and, 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 and Jesus the Son and, and Father God running around up there wondering what they're going to do. Uh, I never get that. Uh, I get a majestic view of them high lift up. Said, you know, like we use the modern church, hey, we got this. All we need is to do is ask them just to believe us. Uh, just believe that we can do what we say. Amen. Not one thing has failed that God has ever said. Has ever, has ever said. It hasn't failed. You know, and that's what we have to look at. Okay? What when has God not 
not through for you. Think about that in your whole life. When has God not come through for you? The thing is, it may not have been the way you thought it was, right. but you know what? I know when those things didn't come the way I thought it was, you know what happened? God had something better. Uh -huh. God had something a lot better. When I first moved up here, I had a job. I lined up, had an interview, the best interview I ever had in my whole life. And I, that lady liked me, seemed to like me so much. I had, and she took me and said, can you got time to go for another interview at a second location? I said, you got it. And I thought, wow, boy, that just a perfect fit for me. You know, I had worked there before, years ago, and you know what? It fell through. They took too long to hire me. I said, I got to get to work. You know? And I said, God, I don't understand that. I mean, everything seemed to be, but you know what? I've learned one thing. I'm going to trust you. If something falls through, something's better is coming. Right. And that's what you got to look at. Oh man, this house, we really love this house over here, and everything seems really good over here, and the price seems good, and they're working with us, and all of a sudden, the people that sell it decide, no, we're going to keep it. God, what, what's going on? You know what's going on? you got to trust God. God, I, 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 don't, I don't understand, but you know what? I'm going to trust you. Okay? Maybe you have a reason for us not living here. Maybe you need to live on this side of town because you know what? There's a neighbor next door that doesn't know me that needs to know. And okay, and so you're going to be the one to go over. I used to live over at 8th Street up there in West Des Moines or 8th Street up in the, uh, off of 6th Avenue up here. And, and there was a, a lady that went to my church. Now I hadn't planned on getting a house in the circumstance. They, they did let me live there. And, and this lady knocked on my door one night. One, night, one late afternoon, and she says, Tim Ben, who was a guy that lived a, a house south, and he was 86 years old, and he was dying, and he was in the hospital. He says, Tim, we got to go talk to him. He doesn't know Jesus. So what do you do? She knocked on my door. She said, what do you do? Well, you know, uh, I'm kind of busy today, and, and uh, maybe, maybe we can go tomorrow. You know, we'll set up a time to go with Ben. You know, no, let's go right now. Now, the 86 years old is in the hospital. He's in the hospital for a reason, and he might not make it much farther, right? So let's go down and talk to Ben. Yeah. So we went down to the hospital down there at Methodist, with uh, the main hospital down there, and we talked to Ben. You know what? He couldn't talk much, but we prayed a pair of repentance with him, and we told him how much God loves him. And all I remember, he had a smile come on his face. So I knew he understood something that we shared, you know? And you know what? Ben died a few days later. Mm. And I'm going to see Ben in heaven. Yes. Amen. Yeah, not get, never to get to know him much down here, but I'm going to see him up there. So what do you do? That's what God wants. And I thought about, well, if I hadn't been over A Street, moved over there at that time, and, and she wasn't a neighbor, I mean, I mean, there's so many circumstances that come, I could have moved to another part of town. But that's what I'm saying. God can get you where he wants you to. We don't need to fight God. We need to go with God. You, you think about how a river flows. You know, everything kind of just flows along. I tell you what, we get in that river that God's moving along. And, you know, just let him understand. Let one, we got to understand one thing, that we need to submit our will to God constantly, every day. And it doesn't make any difference, you know, if, if God says, you know, hey, I need you to go to this store rather than that store. Well, God, I mean, you know, this one's a block away from me. He said, you know, you don't understand, okay? Listen, I've got a heart over here prepared for you. I need you to go over there, okay? And because I need you to talk to that person. And, and it may be just, you don't know what a smile or a kind word says to somebody else to change their life. I remember at one point in my life when things weren't going so good, and I, and I remember I was at a hotel, and this young kid, he come walking by me. It's a second level. He come walking by me, and he kind of nodded his head, and, 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 and you know, I said, how are you doing? You know what he said? He said, I'm blessed. He was probably about 12 years old. Mm. Man, that just stuck with you. You know? He didn't say, what's up? You know, hey, what's happening, brother? Give me up. He didn't say none of that. So, it's not wrong with it. Give me five. You know, he didn't say that. He said, I'm blessed. That came out of his mouth just boom. So I know it was real. Yeah. He, well, you, how are you going to fake that? He didn't fake that. He said, I'm blessed. I thought, yeah. wow, that's it. I'm blessed. That's the kind of stuff I need to be saying. Whether or not it's actually circumstance, you're still blessed. You're still alive. You still got up this morning. Still got clothes to wear. You know, still got a car to run. Let me tell you, that's what we all look at. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm 
Kelly, folks. Now I gotta get going on this because there's still a couple things. Verse 9. Now behold, the crowd of the Israelites have come to me. I have also seen how uh, the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, this verse 10, and I will send you. See, God's got a job for you. He's going to send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Right. All right? Now this is coming right here. Now Moses has a chance to speak. And Moses said to God, Who am I? Wait a minute. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Me? That I should go to Pharaoh and bring Israel out of Egypt? Verse 12. Never forget this. Never forget this. God said, He didn't get on Moses' case, nothing. He just said this I will surely be with you. Never forget that. Oh, man. And that, this verse, certainly, I will be with you. Yes. I will certainly be with you. I will surely be with you. Yes. And this should be a sign to you that I have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You serve God on this mountain for or Sinai. Now I'll tell you what. Moses needed to remember that. That God was going to be with him. He needed to remember that. And we need to remember that too. It's not just for Moses. It's for all of us. That God is with us. Right? Yes. Okay? And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God and your fathers shall send me to you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? What am I going to say who sent me? And I love it. This is a great response. Yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. And again, you know, God's got just to have a air conversation. And God said to Moses, I love it. I love what he said. Yeah. I am who I am. Yep. That's it. Yeah. I am. Remember that. You know, because when, when, the, when the Pharisees was talking to Jesus there, you know, and John, you know, he said, Abraham was, I am. Oh, does that kind of resonate? Sound familiar? No. I am. Not that I used to be. I always was. I'm always current. I'm always. The Bible says he's a present help. He's a right now God. We always got to remember that. I am who I am. Yes. And what I am. And I will be what I will be. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And he said, you shall say to this to the Israelites, I am, I am, has sent me to you. Yeah. Just tell them, I am. Because I am everything. Now think about that. I am. I am your healer. Yeah. I am your deliverer. Yeah. I am your provider. I am the one that makes a way out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Which way should I go? Which way? I get asked that stuff. I don't know which way to go in the direction of my life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't go wrong following Jesus. You can't go wrong. He's going to lead you in the right direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that. I love that. Let's never forget that. Never forget that. Never forget that. The, the one thing but I always want you to remember is that how much God loves you yes. every day. Everything. He thinks about you. You tattooed on His hands. Oh. He loves you so much. Yes. Think about that. How much you love your kids. You know, how much I, I often, one time my daughter was saying, and she was saying, you know, we got to talking about kids and how much you love them. If there was a million dollars on the table and you could have a million dollars tax free, but the only stipulation is she could never see her kids again. You know? And she, before I got finished, we was thinking about that. She said, Daddy, that's easy. They can keep their money. They can keep their money. I want my kids. Think about that. Think about that. Think about how much Jesus sacrificed. God, so He sacrificed His life for us. You know, God sent His only begotten Son. You know, that would have been so hard. So hard to do that. You 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 you, you remember, remember Abraham and, and Isaac and the ram caught in the thicket. You know when when you see that whole thing transpire. You know and he's getting ready to sacrifice his son. You know I got to thinking, wow. You know there was a ram caught in the thicket. Now we got a substitute. But there's going to be a day down through time there was no ram no more. You know there wasn't going to be a ram in the thicket because Jesus himself was going to be the lamb. You know, he was going to be the one. And he was willing to go. It wasn't an easy easy decision. 
Because in the garden, you think about all the sins, past, present, and future. Right. And one of the things that's always so powerful to me is when he was in the garden, he wanted a prayer of man to help him. Right. He wanted them guys to pray. Can y'all pray with me? Right. I mean, you don't, you know, I don't think they understood everything was going down. But you think about it, all the sins, past, present, future, the ugliness you can think of was coming down on him yeah. all at one time. And he said that, you know, the Lord, if, if this cup can pass by me, you know, because he got the flesh too. I mean, he was a human being. Yeah. And you got all that coming down. But you know, nevertheless, not my will. But I know. And see, he understood that. Yes. Again, it goes back to your will, right? It goes back to just saying, God, whatever you want with my life, I surrender all. Yes. Have thine own way, Lord. Oh. Have thine own way. Oh. And what we always have to look at is how good God is. Yes. When we was talking, singing that song, I got to share this and then get ready to wrap it up. But I got to share this because this is one of my favorite songs of all time was how great they are. That and somebody had that on the on the on the playing on the radio. Yeah. That is one of the greatest songs ever. I don't care who's saying. But that's what we gotta think. These are the lyrics there. How great they are. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed. Well, you talk about majesty. You think about sometimes you see lightning storms. You see how, how, how everything's lit up. And sometimes it's just a quiet night where you see all the stars. You know, sometimes the stars seem so close. I remember riding on an airplane. I like to settle the wing, you know. And, and I looked out and it's like you could just walk out walk out of the way and grab a star. It seemed like it was so close. It's like, God, man, if, you know, listen, well, what's keeping this airplane up? You know, people an engineer. I tell you what, God's keeping this airplane up because I tell you what, it don't have to be flying. Let me tell you, but I'm thinking, man, it, it's, it's great. It's like you feel like closer to God, but in reality, the Bible said, Emmanuel, God with us. So God's with us and he's in us, can't get any closer. He's still with us the whole time. He's in us. Hallelujah. Oh, and then, oh, I love this. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art. Hallelujah. And that, that, should, that should just touch your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then this ought to happen every day. Then sings my soul. Yes. Then that song ought to come out of you. Oh, then yes. sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. Yes. How great thou art. How great thou art. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 When through the woods and forest glades I wander. I hear the birds singing yeah. sweetly in the trees. Hallelujah. When I look down from the lofty mountain grandeur, mm. if you ever run the mountains yes. and, you, and, and you're at the top of the mountain yeah. and you look down and you yeah. just see all the yeah. glory there. Hallelujah. And I see the brook and I feel the gentle breeze. Yes. Then sings my soul, yes. my Savior God to thee. Yes. How great thou art. Yes. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, yes. my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Now, <clears throat> this is what we're talking about. We're bringing, it's nice to see the birds and it's nice to see the mountains. But now we're going to bring it to us, the human being. This is where God, you know, you ever knows that when, when God created them, said it was good. It was good. It was good. But you know, on the sixth day when he was man, you know what he said? It was very good. Wow. Isn't, that, isn't that different? Yeah. He said it was very good. Yeah. That's a big difference. That's how much he loved us. Yeah. You know, and he's looking already, realized he's going to be a sacrifice for them. Yeah. Even when, you know, when, they're, when the kids are, are not acting the way they should, you yeah. still love them. Yes. You still want to hug them. You know, I, I remember one time my, my uh, uh, son-in-law, I come up here and I take him out. They, they lived out of town and, and he wanted to go uh, 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 to the, they had to go fly out. But he said, Tim, do you mind? I know it's going to make it tight to make my flight, but I want to go back and hug my father one more time. Ooh. Boy, I mean, that was powerful. 
I want to hug my father one more time. Mm -hmm. You talk about love. Mm -hmm. You think about the prodigal son. I love that. Right. I love that. Because right. the, 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 the father, you know, he runs toward the son. Right. He sees him. You know, he's all kind of slumped down and realizes he messed up. But the father runs to him. You know, it's like, why shouldn't it be called he got this speech all worked out? It's like, oh, you're home now. You're home now. You know, that's all he was working. You're home now. Yeah. You know, hey, break the fatted calf. Put a yeah. ring on his finger. Hey, put some shoes on his feet. Yeah. He's got his authority back because he came home. Yeah. He understood yeah. where to go. And that's what God has asked him. Just come home yeah. and let me take care of you. Yeah. Let me love you. I got the best life for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse here. When I think that God is son, not spared. Hallelujah. Send him to die. I scarcely take it in. It's hard to understand that. That's one thing, the movies that have the scenes where Jesus gets whipped and, and all that. I, I just think I, that is just hard for me to take. All that he went, he was willing. That is hard for me to take that. That on the cross, my burden gladly bear. Yes. Because Jesus knew he was the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. When he, when he came like that, and, and you know what? That gave us a chance to be reconciled back to the right. Father. Okay? Remember the veil was rent, so there was no more gap. We could go into the holies of holies when he died. Hallelujah. He bled and died to take away what? My sin. My sin. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's never forget that. Then sees my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Oh, hallelujah. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. Hallelujah. Because one day we're going to be home. You talk about a family reunion. Hallelujah. We're going to have one of them there. I can talk to Mr. Peter. I can talk to Mr. Paul. Say, how are you doing? Praising God. That's what we're doing. We're going to pray for centuries and centuries and centuries. Hallelujah. And take me home with joy to fill my heart. Then I should bow. Hallelujah. In humble adoration. That's what it's going to be. Oh, we sing that song. Oh, come let us adore him. We tend to sing it just at Christmas. We need to sing it all year long. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come let us adore him. I thought it's about humble adoration. And then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then sing my song, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Yeah. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Yes. How great yes. thou art. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Would you all say it, please? Yes. We're going to take this, this little bit of time just to say, yes. God, we want to thank you today. Yes. God, we want to yes. praise you today. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. How great you are. How good you are. Oh, Lord, if it wasn't for you, where would we be? It's all about you, God. It's all about your goodness. It's all about your deliverance. It's all about your truth. It's all about your word. It's all about in the beginning, God. That you have a plan for our life in Jeremiah. You've got to give us a future and a hope. Hallelujah. And you love us with an everlasting love. That will never end. Right. It will never end. Oh, Lord. And you rejoice over us with sin. As it said in the scripture, you love us that much. Lord, for with God, hallelujah. For with God, all things are possible. All things. Is there anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Let us never forget that. Let us never forget Psalm 37, 25. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging bread. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you for the yes. service. 
We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for the fact that we had a chance and an opportunity to come in and praise you and lift your name up. Lord, that you can touch our hearts and our lives that we won't leave the same way we came, that we was able to come and worship you. We was able to come and lift up your name today. Hallelujah. That you will be glorified because it's all about you, Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you and we want to praise you. We're going to give you the glory in your wonderful holy name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Can you just say a quick prayer so we don't have to pray down there? For the yeah. food. For the food, please. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let Everybody welcome. Up. Plenty of food. Yeah. Time of fellowship. If you can stay. Father God, we want to thank you for the time of fellowship available downstairs. For anybody who would like to stay. And Father God, we, we want to ask you to bless the food. Bless the time of fellowship. Continue to bless John. Lord, thank you for his testimony. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the fact that, that when everybody sees him, they know yes. that he believes in you. Yes. And then, Lord, just bless his family and let's have a great time of fellowship. And we thank you yes. in your wonderful holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.